back to my channel my name is Kika and today I want to share my recent top 10 handmade knits and knits that I have designed so I've done these kind of top 10 videos before but I haven't really done one uh, ever since I published my first ever knit pattern book which is called knit this so it's not really like a full 2023 yet but it's kind of from middle of 2022 until today <laughs> so almost like a year full of knit designs that I want to share with you in this video. I am filming this video in this absolutely gorgeous location in the middle of Helsinki. This is a pink dream come true. I actually found this place uh, through a magazine and then I contacted the owner via Instagram. They rent this out for like photo shoots and even via Airbnb, I think. So I'll link that in the description below if you're ever in Helsinki or looking for something spectacular to maybe visit or shoot some stuff. So I am going to be ranking or maybe not ranking, but I'm gonna essentially be counting down from number 10 to number one, my favorite knit project over the past year. And it's not really that number 10 is any uh, worse or one is better than the other, but I still thought it would be nice to kind of reflect on what I've enjoyed the most, maybe what I've worn most, maybe some things that challenged me technically, some things that I enjoyed for other reasons. So it's kind of more of like a playful uh, top 10 list. Uh, I always just think it's kind of fun when you have to think about which projects that really enjoyed what I learned from them. So it's not really like that one is better than the other, but it's more also to give some structure to this video. All right, starting out in number 10, we have the Olala top. This was a super straightforward, simple tank top that I designed and knitted uh, last summer. And it's knitted on four millimeters. So that's a US six needle in cotton yarn. And I just wanted something like super, super easy. Uh, so it has like this little kind of roll edge. Um, you start it from bottom up. And then I've made a version which has the ribbons or the straps <laughs> just goes like regularly straight and then I also did one version where I did them crisscross so in the pattern you can actually decide which one you want if you want them to go crisscross if you, you want them to have like straight so if you want to have like a bra underneath it kind of covers that and I really feel like making more of these so I've knitted one in an off-white color and then in this kind of lavender uh, shade color and uh, this is in number 10, just because it's very kind of simple. There's not like a lot of fireworks in this design, but it was super enjoyable to knit. And I love the cotton uh, yarn or the cotton fabric feel of this. So it's a really, really nice uh, tank top to wear in the summer. I wanted to give you some styling tips on how to wear the Olala top. It's very simple, so it's really versatile. For example, you could just wear it with a summer's skirt that instantly is just very casual. It's very nice, very comfortable. You could wear this out with friends or just for a day in the city. Uh, and you can mix it up by using different prints and different colors. If it gets a little chilly in the evening, you could, for example, throw on just a jeans jacket and maybe choose a wilder print if you want. And I think this is a really nice outfit to wear in the evening as well. Or for a more put together look to the office, for example, you could wear your Olala top with some really tailored straight trousers and just add a blazer on top and you're ready to go to the office. Or if you're looking for a more glamorous vibe, you could style it with a very stylish, elegant, for example, just black skirt and with some matching black boots. And not to forget the accessories, you could even add some glamour by adding some sparkly earrings. So there you have it, some ways to style the Olala top from more casual to more evening and with some sparkly details. 
Speaking of adding some glitter and glamour in your knitwear styling, I want to say thank you to today's sponsor of this video, which is June's Journey. June's Journey is a free to download mobile game and it's set in the glamorous 1920s. It is a detective story where you are on a quest to solve a murder and you have to find these hidden objects in these very intricate and detailed and colorful different scenes. And even though I really enjoy knitting, I find that very relaxing. Sometimes I want to give my hands a break and then I find playing a mobile game is really nice also because it gives my brain something else to do and June's Journey definitely offers that relaxation and kind of escaping and I also really like that it's so visually inspiring and it's funny because Yuki, my partner, he's also really got it into the game. So we now often, instead of watching TV, if I start to play June's Journey, I mean, I kind of have to do it with him <laughs> because he doesn't want to miss, miss out anything. So then we usually play it together. And even though we're actually pretty competitive, I find we work really well as a team. And it's just nice because it kind of challenges your memory while still being very relaxing and kind of calm. So if you'd like to try out June's Journey, uh, it is free to download. It works on iOS and Android and also on PC via Facebook games. I will leave the link in the description below so you can try out June's Journey. All right, back to the countdown. Continuing with some uh, tops, in number nine we have this brown top that I'm wearing currently. This is a top that I knitted last summer, but I actually never got round to making it into a pattern. So hopefully I'll be able to do that uh, this summer, maybe knit another sample. There are some things that I maybe would like to modify a little bit, but I really like the shape of this, um, I think we call it like racer back. I'm not I think it, that's what you call it. Um, but then I was thinking about maybe doing also a version where you would have some rib here, just so in case, because you can kind of see like your bra straps now. So I would maybe want to make it a little bit wider. So I'm thinking maybe I should do another sample um, and do the pattern so it's a little bit wider, so it's a little bit easier to wear. But I really like this color. I've knitted this from Sanes Garn Mandarin Petite. I held it double. It's exactly the same gauge as in the Olala top. So again, with four millimeter US six needle. And I actually wore this quite a lot last summer. Um, somehow this color, I don't know, it's like very easy to match with things. So this one doesn't really have a name. I'm just calling it like the brown top <laughs> at the moment. Um, and again, like a fairly easy, project, just something that you can just kind of, because you're knitting in stockinette, so you're essentially just knitting in the round. Um, but this one I did start from top down. So hopefully uh, I'll have the time and have the motivation to turn this into a pattern this summer. Moving on to number eight. This is the sorbet sweater. This is the white sample of the sweater. This one is knitted with one strand of Sunnes Garn Sunday together with one strand of their brushed alpaca. It's a really chunky knit. And this one is actually a full sleeve size. The first sample I made, um, and the pattern is actually for like a three quarter sleeve. <laughs> but of course you can just continue on and then you'll get a full sleeve. And this one was knitted by um, my sample knitter Elisa. And this one, um, I actually made a full video of me creating it um, that you can go and see. I'll put the link also up here. Um, I had a lot of uh, design doubts when making this. I actually had the initial idea, well, it's completely different. And then it's turned it into this kind of very chunky, just one colored, even though in the beginning I had like this vision to make it with uh, different colors, but it didn't really work out. And yeah, anyways, I really, enjoyed making this. This was so quick to knit because you knit it with so big needles and in this chunky yarn. And this, yeah, I just wanted also to have it in a white color uh, and also these uh, long sleeves because I think it's very cozy. Now in the summer, it's maybe a little warm, even though in the evenings, it does get pretty cold up here in Scandinavia. So I think I'm gonna be able to wear it a lot. And this one I have actually also made a pattern for. So I'll link that in the description below. It's called the Sorbet Sweater. 
uh, and that name kind of came from the sample I made in this really kind of peachy, salmon-y color, um, and that just brought to mind like sorbet. Um, so that's where the name comes from. We have the Lola top, which I am currently wearing. This was definitely last summer's hit. <laughs> I um, really wanted to make something striped and uh, this kind of the construction of it I was so proud of because I had this idea um, of having like the straps and kind of this whole shape. Um, I was just very intrigued and I wanted to try it out. It was something that I've never tried before and I haven't really knitted that many kind of like tops before. Like I'm definitely more of a sweater knitter. Um, so this was a really, really fun project to work on. Um, and I feel like I learned more about construction. I also made another sample in a different colorway, and I also did a full tutorial for this one. Uh, and I know lots of knitters out there have made their own Lola tops in really, really fun color uh, combinations. So I am also thinking that maybe I should do like a knit along or do one. I would like to do one in like really classical, maybe like navy blue or maybe even black and white. Um, I think that could be a really just kind of elegant and you could like wear it with anything, pretty much. Moving right along, in place number six, we have the Stitches sweater. You might remember this sweater. I did a full video of me creating it. I got these yarns in Amsterdam and then I designed this um, during the winter or like a couple months ago. <laughs> and this is really my take on a kind of traditional stranded color work sweater, but then incorporating a modern twist, having these words or the word stitches. So it repeats all the way around. And um, I really, really love the fabric and how soft it is. I paired these fingering weight yarns that I picked up at Steven and Penelope in Amsterdam, this gorgeous, gorgeous shop. If you're ever in Amsterdam, I definitely recommend to pay a visit there. There. and but I wanted to have it a little bit thicker so I could uh, knit this in a, with a just bigger needle so I think I knitted this with a five millimeter so let's use eight needle and I've been wearing this a lot it's very very soft really like these colors they're not maybe my typical like palette of colors but I really like them and my plan the whole time of course has been to turn this into a pattern. I already started it, but of course um, I realized that it, well, as I was actually designing and knitting this, I was already thinking about how am I going to grade the text? Because if you have the text, um, it repeats all the way around this word stitches. Um, you can imagine that's like a little tricky to grade, <laughs> but I think I've managed to figure out how to do it. And I intended to release this as a pattern already here in the spring, but then all kinds of projects came up and I had so many ideas. So I think now um, I'm going to be releasing it in the fall um, just because I have so many other projects right now and it kind of makes maybe more sense this is like still like a pretty chunky sweater. So I think I'm gonna hold off on it a little bit, but it's definitely coming up and I really enjoyed knitting it. It went so quickly with color work. I feel that's always just goes so quickly. Um, or at least like mentally it feels like it goes very quickly because you're still curious to see how it's gonna turn out. Um, so yeah, a project that I really enjoyed. Um, it's in place number six um, because I guess this is a sweater that even though I've worn it a lot, it's not like one of my maybe go-to sweaters. This is a little bit special. Like it's, you really want to be, or you have to be like in the mood to wear this because yeah, it's pretty bold and kind of wild. So, um, but definitely, I mean, I love this design. I would love to make one with like a darker color base and then maybe with like some bright red. Um, so maybe I'll knit another sample um, once the weather gets a little colder again. Now I'm really into summer knits. So yeah, that is Stitches sweater in number six.
All right, next up we have the wishbone sweater that I am currently wearing. I'm standing here with the microphone a little bit awkwardly because I can't really clip it to this color because then it kind of flops out. <laughs> this one is really one of the designs that I am the most proud of as a knitwear designer. I tried a bunch of new things while I was making this. So how the shoulders are constructed and the front and the back yoke, those were all new things for me. So it, instead of having like a raglan seam, you have this uh, seam that goes along the shoulders, which I find very, very elegant. And I also tried doing a bit of a higher color for the first time. I've never done that before. And I've done a pattern for it. Um, and in the pattern, I've actually, there are two different versions. So you can do the straight color version, or you can also do a German short row version, which is the one that I am currently wearing. So that essentially just means that you shape the collar with some German short rows so that the back gets a little longer than the front. So that was just allow the fabric to drape really beautifully. Of course, you can also do the straight color version. That was the first sample I made. Maybe it's a little bit easier if you're kind of a little bit new to knitting, but I would definitely say that German short rows, it kind of maybe sounds a little intimidating, but once you get the hang of it and realize that it's just that you do, instead of when you knit something in the round and then for a while you will just knit back and forth, that's really all there is to it. So it's very, very easy actually, even though it kind of sounds intimidating, or at least I know um, that I found it just intimidating and complicated, but honestly, it really isn't. Uh, <laughs> and I'm also working on making a tutorial for this sweater, and it's just taking me a while because I'm knitting a third sample of this as I'm working or as I'm filming the video for it, but that is coming up. Really, really love this design. I've worn it so much. Um, yeah, I'm knitting a third sample right now and uh, that video is coming up. And if you'd like to check out the pattern, I will link it in the description below. Okay, in place number four, something that I am personally very excited to try on. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> My wedding dress. I honestly haven't tried this on since the wedding. So this is going to be very exciting to see how it looks on. So let me just pop it on and we'll talk some more about it. It definitely still fits and I remember I even made these little, um, what do you call these, like these little things for the straps to keep them in place because I was really struggling with that, like the straps of the underdress that I made, um, they were visible all the time. I mean, it still fits, <laughs> it feels so weird. To be wearing this again, it definitely brings to mind very good memories of the wedding day. Um, I mean, the wedding honestly was, it's such a cliche, but it was the best day of my life. And wearing this dress um, made it that more special. And you might have seen the video. So I filmed a full video of me making <laughs> or designing, knitting and crocheting this dress in just six weeks before the wedding. And it was absolutely an insane challenge. Very, very ambitious. But also I loved that time in life because I was so focused. So even though we were also moving to this house, we were planning the wedding. I had my knit pattern book uh, come out just about the around that time. Um, I really loved that I had, like this was the priority for six months. This was really like, even though there were all these other things going on as well, I just remember carrying this project with me wherever I went, filming the entire process, which is so nice to have now and have as a memory. And also, I mean, making this dress was a huge undertaking, like from a design point of view, there were, well, you can watch the video if you haven't seen it, but there were many, many struggles, like with the whole construction and of course, like making a dress. I had made this from, 100% uh, silk yarn from Knitting for Olive. Uh, and then I crocheted some parts and then mostly I knitted it with like a four millimeter, so that's a US six needle. And I held those yarns double, but it became very heavy. <laughs> and I was really worried about 
it being very heavy um, so that it would grow a lot. But I mean, even now, and of course I haven't had it like hanging on a hanger, I've had it stored like um, folded. <laughs> um, and I mean, this is just like such a special uh, project. I mean, I was thinking of putting it in number one, but I mean, this should be in its own category for itself in a sense, I feel. Um, but this is definitely a one-off and I don't think I will ever turn this into a pattern because this was really something that I was designing. I was, as I was going along, um, so I can't even remember everything I did here. Um, and one of yeah my absolutely most beloved and most complicated well this is definitely the most complicated projects i've ever done also just because i've combined both crochet and knit into this but i have been thinking of maybe getting inspired or taking inspiration from this design and maybe just making a top or making just like a skirt or something like that. So that would be fun. Um, so we'll see if I maybe can do that. But yeah, it's in number four, my wedding dress that I made last year. In third place, is the arctic light sweater this is definitely one of my all-time favorite sweaters that i've ever knitted and ever had in my closet it is really a fireworks of textures and cables really fun to knit just because you have all these things going on um, it's knitted from top down and you even have in the raglan seams this cable um, and this one i have four arctic light sweaters which kind of goes to show how much i love this one <laughs> this is the last sample i knitted for this step-by-step -step video tutorial that i have here on my channel and of course you can also find the pattern in the link below and this is actually the sweater that i designed if i'm not mistaken it was the first thing i designed after having completed my wedding dress and <laughs> looking back um, it's kind of funny to think that I did the wedding dress, which was a pretty complicated project. And right after I started to do another uh, design with lots of textures and cables and stuff. But I kind of wanted to incorporate what I learned from my wedding dress, thinking about all these cables and textures into a sweater. The first sample I made was also actually in a white color. <laughs> so I think uh, also there, you might have think that I would have been completely tired of the color white after knitting that wedding dress project, but nope. I wanted to have a white sweater and I've worn it so, so much. It's kind of this, the shade of white, it's not like really off whites, but it goes more towards like a grayish color, which is like super elegant. And I have, enjoyed wearing these sweaters so, so much throughout the winter. So I have one in like a white color, then I have one in this lime color, one in a beige color, and then I have this one in a blue color, which was the last one that I made. And um, the pattern, I mean, if you would like to knit this, even if you're maybe a little bit more new to knitting, the video tutorials definitely help. And you can go and check those out first to kind of see what's coming up. Um, of course, I'm sort of biased here, <laughs> but I would say that once you kind of just understand what those different symbols uh, means and kind of get the hang of the logic of doing cables. It's really not that much to it. I mean, if you know how to purl and you know how to knit, you basically know it all. <laughs> so I would definitely encourage you uh, to give it a go if it is something that you would like to try. In second place, stripe pipe sweater. This is a brand new sweater, like hot off the needles. And maybe it's kind of silly that I put it on this list because I put it in second place. And of course that is because I've just finished this. So I am absolutely in love with this design. I love that it's so colorful and playful. I've wanted to knit something striped for the longest time, but I don't know why I have been resisting it and I've been really doing lots of just like uh, unicolored projects. But now I went for it and I was really craving a project where I could use up some of my scrap yarns because this one really uses up, it's knitted in a DK weight, but then I've also uh, just held two fingering weight yarns together to get like a DK weight. I've knitted this uh, in Sunday's Garn Double Sunday and also in Sunday's Garn the Sunday, which is it's also a merino yarn, but it's just, uh, well, the Sunday's garn, double Sunday is double the weight <laughs> of the Sunday yarn. Um, and this is just perfect because me, I have so many kind of random single skeins of yarn 
in my stash that I can't make a full sweater of, so I wanted to have a project where you could use those single skeins and also just I love thinking of color combinations, so I also wanted to have a project where I can really think about different color combinations. Uh, and I think this is a sweater, I mean, it's very, very beginner friendly. This is, you start, it has like dropped shoulders, so you just start by working the back yoke, back and forth, then you pick up some stitches here for the front, then you make the neckline, and then you kind of join everything in the round and just knit the body. And then you have the sleeves where you also pick up stitches for, and then just work them in stockinette stitch, so it's just like knitting. And this was honestly, okay, I did make a mistake, so I had to like rip back uh, some of the body a little bit, but if I wouldn't have made that mistakes, I would have knitted this in a week, um, which is very, very quick, I find. Um, and it was just so much fun and so addictive because I always wanted to see like, what is the next stripe gonna look like? So um, I'm really, really eager to knit another one of these, even thinking about making a summer's dress maybe in a cotton yarn. Um, and this one, yeah, it's in second place, even though I've, only had this for like literally a couple of days <laughs> but I wanted to include it here and kind of be honest about what I feel like is my favorite project <laughs> and um, I've just actually sent this out now to be test knitted so I have made the pattern for it so it should also be coming like the next few weeks um, probably like more towards June um, but yeah definitely one of my absolute favorite designs that I have made recently. The moment we have all been waiting for, number one, the Salty Days sweater. This project and this sweater, I mean, it's been so long in the making. I feel like when I got this idea from that scarf that I tried to design uh, at the start of the year until today where I have the, both the pattern and I've also made a video tutorial for it, there's been so much work <laughs> went into this sweater, um, but I'm so, so happy with it. It's really one of those projects that I think I'm gonna have in my closet forever. I wear it all the time. I have it in four different colors. I've knitted three myself and then I had a sample knitter knit one of them for me. Um, and I just feel like this goes with anything and in different colors you get it to be so different and this dropped shoulder and like the whole construction of it, I was just very pleased with how it turned out. I also like this neckline, it's a little bit wider. You have the longer sleeves to get that really kind of elegant feminine vibe. Of course, that is something that you can always tweak. You don't have to make them so long uh, when you knit the sweater yourself. But this, yeah, this is in number one because I just feel like there were so many things that clicked in this and so many things that maybe don't, that they weren't really obvious to me in the beginning. Um, like for example, I was thinking when I was making these different panels, I wasn't sure exactly if I would repeat these or if there would be, you know, some like really big chunks of this uh, one by two ribbing and all these things. Like there were so many questions along the way and so many design choices and I was kind of worried about making the wrong choice. But I just feel like in the end, everything just clicked. Um, I did have to make the sleeves yeah, I had to rip it up because the first sleeve design I had was I had this lace here uh, in the middle of the arm, but that just didn't look great. It just looked like really weird and wonky, the whole thing. So then I had to rip it up and uh, do it again. So instead I placed this uh, lace border here at the end. But that was really, I think, the only thing that I had to rip up or maybe there were some other things as well. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> but this one definitely deserves number one. Worn this so, so much. Love it, the Salty Days sweater. So there you have it, my top 10 designs from the past 12 months. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found some inspiration, maybe give you some ideas. Maybe there was one that you would like to try out. Uh, some of them, yeah, the patterns are definitely coming up. And uh, it's just always fun to go back to like old projects. My mind is definitely one that moves with rapid speed. So once I'm done with one, I tend to just like move on to the next one and not really think about what I've just done. So I feel like for me and for my brain, it's just very useful to go back and actually look at what I did, stop and reflect and also think um, what I learned from the process, what I enjoyed. Also, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes you have an idea for a design, you think it's gonna be like 
the you know my go-to sweater but maybe then it's something that you don't wear so much and then another design is actually the one that you wear all the time thank you so much for watching this video if you'd like to see more of my photos you can come and say hi i'm over on Kudavakika on Instagram and of course for all the patterns you'll find all the links uh, in the description below so you'll see the text and then you can click show more and then you'll see all of those links to the patterns uh, some of the ones that I've showed you in this video some of them are coming up um, so yeah stay tuned for that and I will hope to see you in a next video and see you on Instagram all right take care and happy knitting <laughs> bye